Thank you for giving me blood. Thank you for giving me shelter. Thank you for saving my life. Support the Red Cross and change a life, starting with your own. He's a 20-year hairstylist who's worked with several brand name sponsors and has interviewed celebrities including Nick Cannon, Pamela Anderson, and Russell Simmons. He's got over a million views on YouTube, and he's been to several red carpet events, including the Oscars. Please welcome the salon guy, Steven Marinero. Hey. Thanks for having me. Thank you so for glad to have you here today. So we know that you've done a lot in your career. Yes. You've covered some big fashion events and met so many people. But how did you build up to this brand called The Salon Guy? Well, it's interesting. It's a really good question. I've been in the industry 20 years as a hairstylist. And mm -hmm. you know, it's taken me that long to understand what the business was about. You know, I've worked for two of the largest companies. And there was a small part of me that said, I'm getting a little tired of working in a salon. You know, and what can I do to take things to the next level? And I said, I want to become more of like a media guy. Mm. So you know, I, I said, I'm, I put down a video camera in front of myself, and I started recording videos of myself to motivate people in the salon industry, which is interesting. Who wants to look at me for hours and hours? But you know, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know I, went, I went from interviewing myself to motivate people in the industry, because when I worked for these huge companies in the beauty industry, I was sharing information with people. I was teaching them. So I mm -hmm. love communicating with people. Mm -hmm. So I said, what do I do to kind of take things to the next level, but still in the same industry? So that's when I started be, make myself into a brand. And I said, the salon guy. I mean, I know salons. It's kind of like the pool guy, you know? It's like he, yeah. you know, whatever. <laughs> like, the salon guy, you know? And that's how it happened. And I started going out there and making connections. And, you know, slowly but surely, people started recognizing my brand name, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and it was a long hustle, and it's taken me three years to get to this point. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much how it all started, which is, you know, a lot of hustle and passion and grind and that's the thing about building a brand it's all about what you put into it is what you get out of it yeah. mm -hmm. so when you talk about hustle and grind you're signed to one of the largest youtube networks broadband tv what sets mm -hmm. you apart from other people trying to do what you're doing well besides my good looks and personality no i think it's every every person who has a youtube channel it's interesting because it's what they put into it you know it's what they want the audience to get out of the message you know so i do hair tutorials I'll do comedy spoofs, I'll do motivational things, red carpet events, mm -hmm. you know, interviews with celebrities. I think what makes me unique is my content. You know, and people are going to YouTube looking for unique content, and that's what's important. Mm -hmm. So I think I have such a broad range of content, that's what people keep coming back to, to see my videos and my, and what I, what, who knows what I'm gonna do, you know? Mm -hmm. One day it's a comedy spoof, the next day I'm interviewing a celebrity. You know, and people are like, this guy's all over the place, but, uh, you know, I've, You're like, you, out there. yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, you mentioned I, I broke a, a million views, and that was a huge, a huge deal for me. It was pretty exciting. I mean, some people get a million views off one video. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be a baby eating something and get a million views. You know, <laughs> but, you know. so I mean, it's it's been a long process, but um, consistency is the key. Mm -hmm. You know, constantly. You know, if I can do videos seven days a week, that would definitely mm -hmm. be helpful. But it's a lot of work. You know. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned the red carpet before. Now, can you tell us your experience at the Oscars and how did you even prepare for that? Like, I call it my journey to the Oscars. You know, because mm -hmm. not anyone can just go. No. Right. And. You know, I just like anything else, you apply for it. You know, they check your credentials and your background and see like who is this guy. You know, and I'm not on a major network. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm not major like NBC or you know all these big TV shows. But um, they check my credentials, and m my thing was I want to film the setup of the Oscars. It wasn't just the uh, red carpet. So mm -hmm. I was there for ten days. Oh, wow. So I filmed. Yeah, every day wow. was my journey to the Oscars. So when I got there, it was the setup of the red carpet. It was all the bleachers and, and behind the scenes of what happened before the Oscars, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. Nobody got to see that. So every day I was filming something saying, this is my journey, this is what's happening, so you guys can see it. And I was mm -hmm. every day was posting a video of my journey. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll never forget the day of the red carpet. I'm like, oh my God, here it is. Today's a day. Mm -hmm. you know. And you see people from all over all the place. I mean, major networks are all lined up in this red carpet. And the red carpet was a few hundred, like five, six hundred feet at least. I mean, this thing was a monster of a red carpet. I mean, all the way down. But to see it in person at the Dolby Theater in you know, Hollywood is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have been to Hollywood before, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, when you're walking around, you're seeing these superhero um, trying to come up to you and take pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, if I saw one more Spider-Man come up to me, <laughs> ask me for money to take pictures, I'll you know. Right. But, uh, but it, it was pretty funny. Uh, but I never forget, you know, here I am, the red carpet, and I had you know, my team with me. and. It was a really amazing experience because mm -hmm. this is like the cream of the crop for me. This mm -hmm. is the biggest red carpet I've ever worked. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, I was doing it for myself. I was there as a salon guy, you know, to talk mm -hmm. to people about style and fashion. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we started, it was time to start filming and, uh, you know, I was capturing all sorts of interesting things, you know. Mm -hmm. My press credential expired at a certain time, which is when, the, you know, the Oscars started. I wasn't allowed in because you know, I wasn't a major TV network. Yeah. But I got en enough exposure to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And there was hundreds of people, you know, from in the bleachers. There was, uh, you know, some minor celebrities starting to come in. I did, uh, did some interview with someone from Terrence Jenkins from E, you know, which was really oh, cool. Wow. Yeah, so I'm talking to him and people are watching and then like next thing you know, I'm right behind him when he's live on E. So I'm getting text messages, you're on TV right now, you know, which is really <laughs> cool. Yeah, but it was awesome. interesting. I was wearing, yeah, I was wearing a brown tux, a brown and black tux, which stood mm -hmm. out a lot. And he was wearing a kind of a white jacket. And I got a lot of publicity for the, the outfit I was wearing because it wasn't a traditional oh. black tux. Mm. You know, but um, good choice. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah I was, good choice. <laughs> I was actually just dressed by somebody. Somebody dressed me. Hey, yeah. good choice too. Yeah, I mean, if you can get that stuff, then mm -hmm. that's cool. But so, why are you so passionate about fashion and hair, and what really inspired you to get into everything? Honestly, I got involved in the hair industry to be around girls all day. I'll be honest with you. You know, I want to be around beautiful women all day when I at a young age. Okay. I didn't care about doing hair really. And then yeah. I said, oh, this could be a business for myself. And then, you know, it didn't come easy at first to me, and I'd like to take on challenges. So, mm -hmm. you know, going through school, you know, cosmetology school for two years, you know, it, it was difficult for me to get the hands-on feeling of actually doing hair because I wasn't used to doing it. You know, I was playing sports when I was a kid. You know, I wasn't really, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and then I just became so passionate because I had mentors, had people that I was looked up to and wanted to be, surround myself and going to these big hair shows and these big events. I used to mm -hmm. see these people on stage like, wow, I want to be like this guy, you know, doing models in a suit. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. this, this is awesome. And just the energy of the industry. It's a lot of loving people, you know, it's beauty. Uh, and I'm just a passionate guy, you know, to begin with. And mm -hmm. uh, wh what's happened over the years is that, you know, my passion has turned into my brand, a salon guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, you know, I'm a very loving person. I'm a very caring guy to put everything into what I do. So I, I just, you know, I love what I do. I love the beauty industry. I, and I think people should have more passion in what they do and, and in life and the way they're around people. And that's what I base my, my business model around, just being nice to people, mm -hmm. you know, treating mm -hmm. people with respect, you know? Right. My mm -hmm. bad jokes get me nowhere, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they will at some point. Maybe yeah, it'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> well, the salon guy is known for doing hair demos on YouTube, but today he's going to do a demo for us right here on our show in the studio. Don't go away. We'll be right back with the salon guy. America is turning over a new leaf. The SmartWay Leaf from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. The SmartWay Leaf will help you identify environmentally friendlier cars and trucks that can save you money. These vehicles are certified to be more fuel efficient and produce fewer greenhouse gases. And look for renewable fuels to improve our energy independence. Follow the Leaf to epa.gov slash SmartWay. Welcome back to The Roundabout. We're here with the salon guy, Steven Marinero. Now, over the break, we were talking about how girls have trouble curling their hair, and they do a lot of damage to their hair if they're not properly curling it. So Steven, you're going to show us a couple of techniques. Yes. And we also have our wonderful producer, Chelsea, here with us to be a sit-in for us. Which means I have to do an extra good job. Yeah, so we all know that famous video of the girl who burnt her hair off. A lot of girls damage their hair when they're curling, curling their hair. What is the best way? Well, I'm also a prime example of burning my hair off, too. I tried it on myself, and look what happened. To me. <laughs> uh, but no, you're right. Actually, th a few key things when you're, doing, when you're using hot tools. You want to make sure your hair is completely dry. Sometimes people take blow dryers or iron to their hair when it's wet, and that could be a serious issue, too. Also, if your hair is completely fried to begin with, like overprocessed, heavily bleached, you got to be careful because the heat is so hot. You're talking, you know, 400 over 400 degrees can really burn your hair right off. So mm -hmm. that, I think that's what happened in her case. Okay. So I always suggest uh, a few things when you're, you know, dry your hair first after you wash it, and blow dry it. You know, I, almost as smooth as you can because if you can eliminate the frizz as quick as possible, that's also you're off to a good start. It takes time to do that, but you know, you want to make sure you're using good products to do that. I've been using the uh, Milania Hair Care, which is incredible the smoothest, silkiest hair I've ever seen uh, in, in my 20 years uh, as a hairstylist. MelaniaHairCare.com, it's incredible. Um, there's three products. You always want to use something when the hair is wet, okay? Put something in when the hair is wet because that's going to be your styling tool. It's going to prevent frizz. Those things are going to help show in the end result. Mm -hmm. Once you dry your hair, 
Then I always suggest using um, a thermoprotecting spray, which is kind of like adding like sunscreen to your skin if you know, you're going out sunbathing or something like that. I use something called Hot of the Press by Paul Mitchell. It's really, it's really a great spray, but it gives you that protection. So what I'm gonna do here is just show you a quick demo, and I have, which is really cool, I have three tools. All right, a curling iron, a smoothing iron, and a wand. And you can, the wand creates magic. It just go like this and it curls. No, <laughs> no, but. We wish. We I know. Wish, yeah. If I can do this and grow hair, I'd be happy, but I can't. <laughs> but um, the thing about this is, uh, it's really cool to get a similar type wave with these tools. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is spray this uh, hot off the press. Um, just, it's a thermal protection spray and it dries relatively quickly, which is really cool. Again, because I said you want your hair pretty dry. When you're doing, you can do it section by section. You can spray on the whole on the whole head. Uh, either way, it's really up to you. So she's got relatively long hair, um, but you know any any length hair can this will work on. So as you can see, this is a smoothing iron. Most people think of smoothing iron as the smooth hair, right? Do you guys think that before? Well, well yeah, I think so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, with the, now with the trends, you're starting to see people more and more you know doing stuff like this with smoothing arms. So what you can do, very simple. You come in, all right? You clamp it down. You twist it and you pull towards yourself, and, and you just start to slowly pull, and you're gonna create this nice, soft wave. Look at that. Nice. Oh, wow. See that? Yeah. This, side. this literally takes seconds to do this, you know? And the key is you wanna make sure you turn the iron so that this piece right here is, is facing, facing you. you. And you wanna keep the iron, uh, the smoothing iron moving pretty smoothly, like you don't wanna hold it. Because that's, that's, what's, great. that's what's gonna create the breakage. If you sit there with this on your clamped on your hair for, you know, two minutes, mm -hmm. then you're gonna you're gonna fry it. You know, so yeah. that's with the smoothing iron. The next piece I'm going to use is with the traditional curling iron. And a traditional curling iron, you know, again, it's gonna give you the more traditional type curls that you see, uh, maybe on you know proms or things like that. But it's gonna give you more of a tighter curl. So uh, again, you want to spray. Make sure it's pretty saturated. Um, I'm using ceramic tools, which really helps. There's a few different things you can do with the curling iron. So you come in, you clamp it in like this, and you want to constantly be turning. Uh, see how I'm doing with my finger there? Mm -hmm. And you want to turn it, twist the hair around, and keep turning toward you, and keep, it, it's, it's like kind of like a constant movement, you know? With, with this here, keep little, little movements to where this fishtail is pretty much Not all the way, you don't see it, mm -hmm. you know? And, and it's okay even to leave the ends out. And then just come in, hold it for a few seconds, you know, like maybe three, four seconds, one, two, three. And then you want to unwind it <clears throat> like this. Down. Check yeah, yeah. that out. Yeah, Aww. see that? Nice. Yeah. If you want to do that with a curling iron, uh, getting that soft wave, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, it's, it's kind of going to tie into the wand that I'm, okay. when I'm going to use the wand. Mm -hmm. But you can also use a curling iron. You, you keep this open and you just wrap it around Okay. And it's basically the same thing with a, with a wand. That's what the wands do. But um, see, it's just like a nice soft wave. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the last bit here on top, this is where uh, the wand comes in. Let me just spray this again. Again, this is just going to be like that sunscreen for your hair, mm -hmm. which is really cool, which helps. And her hair is actually pretty good shape to start with, to start mm -hmm. styling. It's not, you know, even if it has a little bit of flyaways, it's fine. It's not, you know, it's not too bad, but this is a good shape because you can see it, it leaves a nice smooth, uh, and this is really with no product in it either, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, the wand is pretty simple. You come in here and you just simply wind it around, you know, and that's how you're going to get your pieces. And you do these little twists and there you go, right to the end there. And you hold it for one, two, three, maybe three seconds. And then the key is, is unwinding it like exactly this. Like how you did it. Yeah. You just unwind it like this, and it gives you a little more of a, nice. a nice kind of oh, wow. that tighter, but also looks good, you know, <laughs> soft little. Half your head's gonna look. Yeah, celebrity. <laughs> this is the celebrity wave that everybody like goes crazy for, mm -hmm. you know. Magic wand. Yeah, and and you can leave the ends out a little bit. That gives it that little. But the key is, is when you unwrap it, you know, right. you don't want you want to just kind of unwind it the way you Get pull it together, before. and then you can give it almost like a little tug like this, which kind of. Oh, like, oh, that looks nice. It just kind of gives it a little more bounce. It's not so nice. tight. Yeah. Okay. So, but I think she looks. I think she's ready for the Oscars. I think so. Actually, do you have like a favorite technique that you personally like to just do, like a favorite style or? You know, this this kind of look is so in right now. You see this mm -hmm. on red carpets all the time. Just that soft wave. This can be done in minutes. 
You know, I mean, seriously, and these are three different tools that I used. You can do this so quickly that you can walk out of the house like this, you know, and if you yeah. brush this through, you know, even if you run your fingers through it, it kind of softens it up and that's what gives it like, it gives it more of that like lived that in kind, great. Of, kind of like, you know, obviously with the tighter curls, but if you brush this all out, this is what gives like that kind of Hollywood like mm. finger wave almost, you know. What are some other affordable products that you would recommend for college students? That's an interesting one because nowadays, you know, products are, it's tough to say because I like to put, I like to focus on buying products in the salons because professionals are recommending them. Mm -hmm. Right. If you are in a pinch, you know, there's, there's stores that are more well known than like t traditional drug stores. Mm -hmm. Go into a beauty store that's known for selling hair products and beauty stuff, makeup and things like that. Mm -hmm. I'd go in there because you're, you know, you're, you're getting better quality, quality. stuff. And people are suggesting yeah. things or better selection. But at the same time, you know, I would definitely stick with asking a professional. I mean, people think that you go to a drugstore and you get it cheaper. That's not really the case. You know, in some situations it is, but those products are old, they're tampered with. So if you go to a salon, someone can recommend it for you and say, hey, look, I want to buy from you guys, but I can't really afford it. Can you work some out with me? Well, thank you so much for joining us, and that demo is amazing. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> now, if you want to see more of Stephen's work, you can go to his website at www.thesalonguy.com. Check out this YouTube channel where you can see celebrity interviews and more hair demos. You can also follow him on Twitter, at The Salon Guy, or like him on Facebook under The Salon Guy. Stick around, we're going to wrap things up here on the season finale of The Roundabout. <laughs>